Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Our lovely date continues and we have an author in the studio that is no other than Olaji De Ajibowo. Now he wrote a book called Everybody is Pregnant. So I am actually very excited and intrigued to find out exactly what that means. Welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thank How are you, you doing much. today? I'm very well, thank you. Great. So I think we should kick off with the name Everybody is Pregnant. Give me, give me an understanding of the book. Okay, so the title is Everybody's Born Pregnant. Yeah. And um, I got it from, and it was as a result of an inspiration from God. And um, I believe that everybody has a potential inside of him. And so the pregnancy is just a metaphor to show that everyone has something inside of them. But they have to push because you cannot have a baby without pushing. So everybody has to push what is inside of them. As, as a potential so that they can change their world. So that's the idea behind Amazing. everybody's born pregnant. So what we're looking at then essentially is the finding of one's purpose. Yes. So exactly. that leads me to today's topic. How would you describe purpose? What is purpose to you? Purpose, okay, let me start by saying there are two different types of purpose. We have the spiritual or eternal purpose and the specific or personal purpose. Uh, the spiritual purpose, no, no, not, not so many religious, um, non-religious people will say that. But the spiritual purpose is to love God and keep his commandments. But the one I'm most um, particular about is the specific purpose or personal purpose. And um, personal purpose is an assignment that God has given everyone to achieve. It's essentially to solve a problem in life. That's very interesting. Yes. So my co-host isn't here today, right? But her and I started this challenge with everyone, which awesome. is the August Affirmation Challenge. So we told everyone that every day this, um, this month, say something to yourself that's going to bring you closer to your purpose. So, for example, today I said, I am love, right? How do you see affirmations in terms of purpose? How important is it for one to actually tell themselves what they are? Funny enough, one of the chapters of the book talks about the power of the mind. Because mm. you have to, mastery of things comes as a result of repetition. Mm. So when you repeat good things, things that will literally change your life, it's, you know, it gets stuck in your mind and it's going to affect how you think, to affect how you behave, and eventually it's going to change your life. Every day I wake up and I say good things about myself, and over time it has worked for me. So it's very important that we, you know, think, of, think about things and even mortal words that will change our lives. The, okay. it's, it's the very little things that really make sense in life. Okay, all right. Now let's get to know you, right? Let's get to know you and not just see you on the surface. Okay. What inspired you to become so passionate about purpose? Uh, okay, let me start this way. I, my tomorrow is late now. I call him my mentor from the dead. Uh, he came to my church some two years ago, and I was in front row, and he said something. He said, the graveyard is the richest place because there are so many um, dreams not realized. There are so many purposes not fulfilled. And that kicked, that kicked something in my, um, in my spirit. I went back home and right from there, I formed a group called Rice, Redefining Your Self-Esteem. And from there, the passion, you know, he, he's as if he planted a seed inside of me and it started growing right from 2016 to this very moment. And ever since everything I've done, the conferences, the hangouts, it has been to help people. And right from time, you see me go back to the back of my, uh, my compound and I'll just be talking to myself, imagining that I'm talking to people. So the passion has been there right from time, and my small kicked that. You know. What would you say was the lowest point in your life? Well, at the point in time, I, I was depressed. Uh, I had suicidal thoughts, but it wasn't so serious. But I, um, coming, my childhood days, I wasn't so secure. I wasn't so um, open. I still call myself an introvert, but uh, I've embraced my introversion, and I see strength, in, I see strength within. And that has helped my career, it has helped myself okay. and my life. Yeah. All right, let's focus on depression and suicide for a second. This is something that I think we can never speak up, speak about sorry, enough. Now, yes. Nigeria is the world's 30th most suicidal country, yet suicide is criminalized by law in Nigeria. How does that make you feel? It's terrible. It's terrible, but I don't see anything against that law. But because what I, what I would say is that we, the government should um, establish more firms, more organizations, non governmental organizations should come up and talk to people because people are really lonely. You know, I'm surrounded by a lot of people that are suicidal. Wait, it's terrible, but you don't see anything wrong with it? The law. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with Why? criminalizing suicide because it's wrong to take your life, even though that's infringing on um, one's right to take decisions. But... 
I think at the point that you want to kill yourself, you're not sane. You're not thinking right because the pressure is as if they are pouring blocks on you and you can't think right. But so, then is that your fault? Is that something it's, that you it's should nobody's have fault. to it could serve be, something else for? It's nobody's. It could be your fault. It could not be your fault. It could be um, the situation you're in. But that's the role of the government, to see that they help you. And I feel that's a way the law is helping people to prevent them from committing suicide. But okay, how let effective me, let me, is that Let me law? phrase it in a different way. Sorry, okay. I like to get to the crux of the matter on certain things. Okay. Now, when you were depressed and when you suffered with suicidal thoughts, let's say, God forbid, you had taken a certain step towards those thoughts and it okay. failed, okay? So you still survived and you were criminalized for that. How would you feel? It's, it's terrible, like I said before. But it is, it's necessary for, um, to, detect, to, to deter people mm. from doing it again. Okay. Do you understand? So let's, I, okay, let's then look at the other side of it then, okay. which is happiness. Okay. What, what does it take for someone to be happy? Do you see happiness as a choice in life? And how can people strive towards a happier life? Happiness is a choice. Mm -hmm. um, Nigeria today is not really making you happy, but you must choose to be happy. And so, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote this book too, for people to find joy within. It's not just outside, you know, because I, I cited an example. Um, no matter how hot out, um, the environment is, you always see a freezer always cold because it's connected to electricity. So when we are connected to a source beyond our environment, what is around our environment will not really affect us. So that is to say that you must be connected to something that constantly give you, gives you joy. It doesn't necessarily have to be money. It could just be the very little things, looking at the sun, looking at nature, going What makes out. you happy? Helping people, basically. Helping people, impacting lives. And this is not for fame, this is not for money, because if you want to help people, you have to spend money, you have to do all of these things, mm -hmm. do all of those things. So, Helping people makes me mm. happy. It's my passion, and I've always done it. Okay. Now, there's some people out there who struggle to find their purpose in life. And yes. personally, I've always said that that's okay. Some of us find out sooner. Some of us find out later. later. Yeah. How did you find out your purpose in life? What steps did you have to take to derive your purpose from within and get yourself to understand that this is your purpose in life? So I, I don't believe that we find purpose. Because when you say, when you use the word find, it means that that thing is missing. Mm -hmm. I feel we discover purpose. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just happen that, uh, like that. It, it takes time. What's the difference between find and discover, though? They are, they are different, actually. They are quite different. Tell uh, me. <laughs> to find something, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, is, is you're saying that that thing is missing. So you have to locate that thing. You have to um, you know, try and find that thing that is missing. Mm -hmm. But when you discover something, it has this connotation of journey. Okay, interesting. So you have to, you have to um, go through a journey to discover it. So discovering my purpose, um, I was lucky. I was lucky to be surrounded by people like Miles Morrow, like T.D. Jakes, uh, Adibola Williams, and so many of them. So listening to those guys and my closeness with God, it really helped me to discover my purpose. And at a very early age, I discovered that my purpose was to give people hope mm. and inspire them through um, various platforms, which I've always done. Okay, speaking of your relationship with God, what are yeah. your views on religion in Nigeria today? I think religion is killing us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if this would be controversial, but I'll say Christ is not religious. Jesus is not religious. God is not religious. More of a lifestyle. It's, it's, yes, exactly. It's a lifestyle. So Christianity is not a... Uh, well, this might seem somehow, but Christianity is beyond religion. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians take things too far because they don't understand beyond the surface media. They read a scripture in the Bible, they read a scripture in the Quran or whatever, and they just take it on the surface level. I'm privileged to be a lawyer today and I understand the, um, the import of reading things beyond the surface level. And I think that there's a need for Nigerians to have a closeness with whoever they are worshiping and so that they should not think things too far. The heads men and all of these things happening is as a result of um, religiosity and extreme, extreme, uh, extreme works. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the discovery of one's purpose. What are the key steps? If you could give our viewers and our listeners three key steps in okay. terms of actually coming to terms with your purpose, what would those steps be? Um, there are three. Look up, look within, and look around you. What does look up mean? Look up means that you should look up to God. 
Now, I don't say this as a Christian. You could be a Muslim. So look up to God. Only God can discover. Because Mouse Small will say that a manufacturer can, is the only person that can tell you what your purpose is about. A mechanic could say some things about um, a car, but it's only that producer of that car that can say things in details. So look up to God, then look within, because purpose is not something that is missing. It's something that is within. And uh, God, when you look up, God will show you things that is within you so that you can connect it to things outside. And that's where look around you comes in. So you see that you have this uh, attachment to certain things. As growing up, I realized that I loved listening to people and even talking uh, most times. So I realized that my purpose was moving towards uh, empowering people, you know, meeting people. So look up to God. God will tell you to look within. And, you've, and when, when you find that which is within, you'll be able to look around you to help yourself. So what about those who don't believe in God? How do, where do I, they look to? In the book, I, I said that it's not possible to discover purpose without God. Okay. It's impossible. And this is the reason you, like I said, a mechanic can tell you things about a car. But I have, I have, a, slight, I have a slight problem with that because okay. there are some very successful people in the world today on there's a global a scale there's a difference. that okay. don't actually believe in God. Yeah. And Big okay, is, they have that right not to believe, but they yeah. actually manage to discover their purpose. So how is it impossible to discover your purpose without okay. God? So like I said, the guys, this stand on is impossible to discover purpose because you cannot discover something mm. outside of the person that made you in the first place. So that's quite logical. It's not even spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, a mechanic can tell you things about a car. Mm -hmm. You know, little, little things. And the car can move if the car should have a fault. But a producer will tell you things that a mechanic doesn't necessarily know. So you see so many people doing great things. They are successful. They are big. They are all of that. But purpose does not equal success. Okay. Yes, you discover your purpose and you'll be successful. But you can be doing other things and be successful. Okay, that's very interesting. Yep. Alaji Day Ajibo, it's been an absolute pleasure having awesome. you on the show today. Congratulations you. on your book as Thank well. You. How Thank can people you. grab a copy and also how can people find out about you on social um, media? Uh, on Instagram, Jide Ajibo, Ajide Ajibo. On Facebook, Ajide Ajibo. Uh, my website, www.jideajibo.com. Okay, amazing. Yep. Absolute pleasure. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.